Welcome to Ethiopia Today. We will cover the following topics in our presentation. U.S. Envoy to visit UAE, Turkey, Egypt to discuss about the conflict of Ethiopia. Western companies are blind to investments in Africa, says President Museveni. Sudan's international funding is in balance after coup. The details are as follow. U.S. Envoy to visit UAE, Turkey, Egypt to discuss about the conflict of Ethiopia. According to department spokesperson Ned Price, U.S. Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa Jeffrey Feltman will be heading to the United Arab Emirates, Turkey and Egypt to discuss international support for diplomatic efforts to end the conflict in Ethiopia. The United States has repeatedly called on parties to the conflict immediately to end hostilities, but fighting has continued between the Ethiopian government and rebel groups. Reuters reports. As we know, the U.S. is trying its best to stabilize Ethiopia and the Horn of Africa. A couple of weeks ago, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken traveled to three African nations including Kenya, Nigeria, and Senegal. The reason behind his tour and efforts was to ask ceasefire and boosting peace and stability in the Horn of Africa in general and in Ethiopia in particular. Mr. Secretary of State must be in his office in June when the Ethiopian government declared unilateral ceasefire and withdrew its troops from Tigray. However, the U.S. administration turned a blind eye and deaf ear to this measure that costed heavily the nation. The U.S. and its partners paid no attention to the ceasefire. They were not able to put any value on the endeavors on the part of the Ethiopian government before or during the war. Overall, the costly ceasefire has been the source of resurrection for the terrorist TPLF. Meanwhile, the holistic support that the American government has emboldened the divisive group to launch further attacks on neighboring regions. The government's declaration of ceasefire was the right and appropriate decision for the people of Tigray. But the terrorist TPLF has caused more severe damages after the ceasefire within the last five months. The government has given numerous chances to this group but they failed to reply positively. They used all the opportunities given to execute their natural atrocities widely. This group is unreliable in all sorts of scenarios. The incredible thing in all aspects of this conflict is the role of the US. Is America playing the role of mediator? Mediator plays an impartial role. The US is not at all impartial in this conflict. They are friends of TPLF for more than 30 years. They have been providing holistic support for terrorist TPLF. Most Ethiopians and friends of Ethiopia believe that U.S. must have played crucial role on TPLF's attack of the Northern Command on November 3, 2020. The U.S. government's repeated tours to Europe or Africa meant to stabilize Ethiopia have never seen as an ethical. The U.S.'s action is like someone screaming for firefighters after his deliberate fire. Ethiopians have totally lost trust on the behavior and actions of the U.S. in matters of Ethiopia. Don't waste the American public resources in vain. It looks like you run out of ideas. Get rid of your similar old ideas. Initiate brand new ideas which others would like to purchase happily. Otherwise, you are going to be left behind faster than expected. Western companies are blind to investments in Africa, says President Museveni. Chinese private investment in Uganda is growing while Westerners are losing appetite to put money to work in Uganda, 
President Yuri Museveni told Reuters. Museveni pledges to step up efforts to tackle corruption that have made slow progress in Uganda. One of Africa's longest-serving leaders said that Uganda was working to sign a number of deals with Chinese private sector lenders in sectors such as agro and fertilizer processing, minerals processing and textiles. The Western companies have lost their spectacles, they no longer have the eyes to see opportunities, he continued. But the Chinese see opportunities, and they come, and they are knocking, they are coming very vigorously. However, Western companies are saturated with wealth. They are not bothered he underlined. Chinese state entities and private sector firms have long been a driving force of investment in Africa, lending countries on the on the continent hundreds of billions of dollars as part of President Xi Jinping's Belt and Road Initiative BRI. According to the Uganda Investment Authority, the country ranked third in Africa on foreign direct investment FDI from China in recent years. The ties have not been without conflict, however. A parliamentary probe in October concluded that China had imposed onerous conditions on a $200 million loan to Kampala, including the potential forfeiture of the East African country's sole international airport. I don't remember mortgaging the airport for anything, Museveni said. There is no problem Kampala would pay what it owed to China, he added. Museveni's administration, seeking to finance its infrastructure construction program and shore up political support, has secured large credit lines from China over the last decade. Differences over the terms of the contract were also the reason why Kampala had not yet secured a deal with Beijing on the 1,000 km or 620 miles superfast rail link from Kenya's port of Mombasa to Uganda, though talks were still ongoing, the president told Reuters. Talking about the fight against corruption, Museveni acknowledged more effort was needed. Transparency International ranked Uganda 142 out of 179 in its 2020 Corruption Perceptions Index. We are still fighting. I wouldn't boast that we have improved, initially we weren't really concentrating much on corruption, the 77-year-old said, adding the battle against graft was one of his main priorities for his current and sixth term as president. His administration was focusing on recruiting from faith groups, of which the country had plenty, to have enough manpower to fight that war on corruption and would provide an assessment of progress on the issue in two years' time, he added. That is our struggle to get clean people to implement, the laws and institutions are there, Museveni underscored. Speaking about the November 16 bombings in Kampala, which killed three people and were blamed on the Islamic State-aligned Allied Democratic Forces ADF, Museveni explained that there was evidence of coordination from abroad with the men who carried out the attack. The blasts in the heart of the capital shocked a nation known as a bulwark against violent Islamist militants in East Africa, and prompted Museveni to send 1,700 troops into neighboring Democratic Republic of Congo, where the ADF has training camps but Museveni said foreign links stretched beyond eastern Congo. The bombs which they exploded in Kampala recently, we have some indication that they were coordinating with groups in Kenya and in Somalia according to Museveni. Maybe not command and control but collaboration. He was coordinating the operation with Congo's president, Museveni said, but he did not answer a question whether there was coordination with Rwanda, which also has security interests in eastern Congo and which has fought with Ugandan troops there before. Uganda said on Friday that its troops sent this week into Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo would stay as long as needed to defeat Islamist militants. Finally, Sudan's international funding is in balance after coup. Sudan was unable to access $650 million in international funding in November when assistance was paused after a coup, the finance minister of the dissolved government said. A freeze puts in doubt basic import payments and the fate of economic reforms. The financing included $500 million in budget support from the World Bank and $150 million in special drawing rights from the International Monetary Fund, said Jibril Ibrahim who was appointed to a civilian transitional government in February. 
foreign funding was seen as crucial in helping Sudan emerge from decades of isolation and supporting a transition towards democracy that began with the 2019 overthrow of Omar al-Bashir. The October 25 coup upended that transition. The United States has put on hold $700 million in economic assistance since the coup in the World Bank, which had promised $2 billion in grants, has paused disbursements according to Reuters. After mass protests, the military on November 21 announced a deal to reinstate Prime Minister Abdullah Hamdok. He is tasked with forming a government of technocrats but faces political opposition to the deal. Sudan had tremendous international support. Now donors will be much more cautious, said one former official from the dissolved government. As the former official told Reuters, the onus will now be on the military and the government to show they are not returning to the very Bashir-era model that was being restructured and reformed. The U.S. Treasury declined to comment. The IMF, which approved a $2.5 billion, 39-month loan program in June that is subject to periodic review, said it continued to closely monitor developments. Before the coup the inflation rate, one of the highest in the world, had begun to fall, and the exchange rate had stabilized following a sharp devaluation in February. Western diplomats and bankers say those reforms are now at risk and it is unclear how Sudan can fund imports without printing banknotes, a policy that fueled a long-running economic crisis but stopped during the transition. The government had begun to reduce its trade deficit through tax and customs reforms, but those revenues were interrupted by a blockade by a tribal group at Port Sudan before the coup. A further blockade has been threatened. It is said that the main impact of the freeze in international support would be on development projects covering areas including water supply, electricity, agriculture, health and transport. An internationally funded basic income program to lessen the impact of subsidy reform has also been frozen. Ibrahim said Sudan would seek investment rather than grants from wealthy Gulf Arab states that now face their own economic challenges. Thanks so much our viewers, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel. Let's play with the algorithm so that the messages reach out to many viewers as much as possible. And by doing so, you are helping the channel continue to produce these and similar news. Many thanks. I'm not sure.